Hello Booktube, I'm Jonathan, and in today's review I'm going to be talking about Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. Although not really, because that's actually a pen name, as you may know, uh, for Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. I'm not sure if that was entirely necessary. I, in my last review I talked about The Moting God's Eye, which was written by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell, and they didn't feel the need to make up a name and go by Steve Jay-Z Slater, they just went by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell. Uh, although the explanation for it is it is a combination of their middle names and the initials of Daniel's daughter. So that's pretty cute, you can't hate on that too much. Uh, so even though I don't know if the pen name is necessary, this cover is absolutely awesome. The way the pink pops on against the blue I mean, that has to be one of the best spines in sci-fi. You know I'm a mass market paperback guy, the smaller the better I like. I like to hold my books nice and tight when I'm reading in bed, don't like the big chunky ones falling on me and waking me up when I fall asleep, but this is a banger of a cover. Anyway, uh, many of you may be familiar with this series, it's a very popular series, The Expanse. Also has a TV series, uh, The Expanse, on... Uh, Amazon. I believe it started on Sci-Fi and then moved to Amazon. I haven't watched it. I did want to start with the books first, see what I thought of them, kind of get ahead in terms of the plot, not have everything spoiled for me um, when watching the show, and then decide, uh, yeah, when to, when to jump in. So, um, if you've read the series or the books, let me know. Let me know uh, if the show's worth checking out and uh, at what point I should uh, jump into it. So. What is this book? The first book, Leviathan Wakes, uh, what is it all about? Well, uh, the setting, let me see, I'm trying to see how many years in the future. I think it's a few hundred years in the future. Humanity is able to travel between planets, but not stars. So I think this is a really interesting dynamic because in a lot of uh, sci-fi universes, once uh, humans figure out space travel, they're just kind of off and running. The, into the, uh, the, the universe we go, whereas here we're a little bit more limited. I uh, can't travel between stars. So what we have is Earth is a superpower, uh, the colonization of Mars, they are kind of a competing superpower, but they're sort of like a tenuous alliance there. And then there are also people living in the asteroid belt known as the Belters, and they have access to less resources. So they're very uh, dependent on Earth and Mars. So it's a very interesting kind of triangular dynamic there. So this book is told from two perspectives. Uh, we have two stories, uh, one that follows uh, Captain Holden and his uh, ship is destroyed and the surviving crew, they need to find out who did it, why, how do they survive, how do they get revenge. And this is a fun, fast-paced story, lots of action. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Firefly. Uh, I love that series and uh, some similarities there. Holden, he's kind of an interesting character. He's the type of person that is gonna do what he thinks is right, even if it's not always smart. So you love him, but he kind of annoys you at the same time, uh, which is kind of fun. And then the other half of the story is Detective Miller. Now he is a belter and he is kind of a grizzled uh, alcoholic detective. It's kind of on the backside of his career. It's a little tropey, but it works for me. And a young woman has gone missing and uh, he sets out to track her down. And why she's gone missing, how that connects to other things, in the story, in the world, is kind of slowly revealed, interwoven into the story, and that's done really, really well. So I like the combination of this two because you get your kind of space opera, sci-fi, action, adventure with a mystery, noir, thriller, detective story uh, mixed in there as well, which I think is a really fun uh, combo. Now, the other characters in this book I don't think are always as strong. Some of them are a little 2D and cartoony for me. Uh, for example, you, you have the tough guy, you have the strong independent woman, and uh, they're all fun, I like them, but I think maybe they'll need a bit of time to grow and to find the, the additional depth in those characters. 
that we have in the main two. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not a it's not a, a deal breaking flaw for me. I, I think we'll we'll develop them over time. Now. The writing uh, in and of itself, it's very easy to see why this book got made into a show because every chapter feels like a scene in a TV show or a movie. There are very clear ins and outs. Every end of a chapter makes you want to read the next one. And I think that's something that's a real strength um, in the book is that other books I've read where it's told from multiple perspectives, you will think, you know, you'll be rooting like, oh, okay, how do I, how do I breeze through this one to get back to the stuff that I really care about? Uh, whereas in this book, I equally enjoyed both stories. So I think uh, that there was a real strength that no matter whose chapter we were on, I always wanted to get to the next page, get to the next chapter. A mild con of the writing is that it can be a little bit corny. Some of the dialogue is a little cheesy. Um, not all the characters are as witty as a Tyrion Lannister, um, but that's okay. It, it's nothing that completely took me out of the story or, or ruined the book for me. It's just something that maybe could be hopefully improved on uh, with time uh, as the series goes on. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, this is the pace of this book is excellent. This is a real page turner. I blew through it. Um, if we do, we love doing the flick throughs on this channel. We're looking at around 550 pages. And to be honest, I think I burned through the first 400 like that. Uh, that wasn't a very good click. There we go, there's a better click. Burn through the first 400. Instead of picking up the pace towards the end, personally, I felt like it slowed down a little bit, maybe to try and give it more of an emotional impact. Um, but for me, without ruining the ending, I liked the ending, I thought it was cool, but I didn't think it exceeded other elements in the book. There's one particular kind of a escape scene in this that had me on the edge of my seat. I, it was uh, absolutely thrilling. Whereas the ending I thought, okay, that makes sense. Because there's so much that they build up in this book in terms of the world, the politics, the characters. There's a really interesting exploration of technology and the ethics of technology, um, which I thought was done really well. And it all kind of built uh, somewhat satisfying conclusion for this book kind of makes you want to read the next one, which I can't blame them. Uh, this, this is, I believe, a nine book series. The final one's coming out soon. Uh, I can't hate on them for trying to make you get the next one, sell you another book. Uh, totally get that. But so not, not a letdown with the ending, but um, I think there are, there are other parts of the book that top the ending for me. Um, so putting all of that together, I think this is a really uh, fun, fast-paced adventure, some smart elements, some not so smart elements that I think just falls short of great. I'm going to give Leviathan Wakes an 8.5 out of 10. So a really, really strong score. I recommend it to pretty much anyone. If you're an experienced sci-fi writer, I think there's some fun stuff in for you in here for you. And if you're new to sci-fi, I think this is actually a pretty good place to start. If your familiarity level with sci-fi is, is kind of just something like Star Wars, well, I think there's gonna be some fun stuff in here that you'll be able to grasp onto, and it'll introduce a few sci-fi concepts um, to you without it seeming overbearing or a drag. Um, so, yes, I did go ahead and buy Caliban's War, the second in the series, straight away, so uh, you know how excited this book got, uh, got me for the series. And I wanna know what you think. Let me know what you think of Leviathan Wakes, the rest of the series, um, if you've read any of the other books, and also the show. Let me know if I should uh, bust up in the old Amazon account and, uh, and start watching the TV series as well. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and stay tuned, coming soon will be Caliban's War.